750 time for Sunday brunch. My friend Tanya Francisco. As That's you might fun. know that there is a good game happening later this afternoon between the Packers of Green Bay and the Buccaneers of Tampa Bay. Go Tampa. Oh, shush. And you know Just for that. I hate now Tom Brady. Now this, this, my friend, is from my, my cousin. It's a Christmas present. Don't you go there with that. Christmas present from my Vikings fan cousin, Joe. Thank you, Joe. I'm getting good use out of this. Okay. Now we are making a Finnish baked oven pancake. Now this is also called a Krupswa. I'm not Finnish. I'm Italian, German, and Irish amongst other things, but not finish. So what we're gonna do, this is very simple and probably with things that you already have in your uh, in your pantry right now. We're gonna start out with four eggs. This is a Danish whisk, not a Finnish whisk, but a Dan Danish whisk, thank you very much. The oven is preheated, so we're gonna have that. Uh, we're gonna have these uh, four eggs right here. We're gonna beat those. And we are going to then, uh, let's see, we'll add in the one and a half cups of flour here. Oh, now we're over here. What's Hello. so special about this whisk? Why do you use that over a regular whisk? Um, it, you know, it doesn't clog up as much. Oh, you okay. know how when you do uh, some ingredients and you, yeah. you're doing a dough? Now, this is good for dough making oh. uh, because it doesn't get all caught up in the whisk itself. Oh, so you okay. just kind of bake that stuff in. Okay. Uh, we have some milk. We have two and a half cups of milk. Now, I've made this recipe with almond milk. In fact, the one that's sitting out here already made. I made it last night with almond milk. I'm using regular milk here. So this is adaptable uh, for uh, vegan and also for gluten-free. So we're just gonna keep on beating this right here. We have uh, a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Mm. We have a half teaspoon and a quarter teaspoon, uh, a half teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of cardamom. Mm. And we have a teaspoon of salt. And we're just gonna whisk this together. Now, while we're mixing this up, we wanna put this, this is uh, four tablespoons of butter. We're gonna place wow. that, four tablespoons of butter. We put this and we, and while the oven is preheating at 425, is when you put that in there, okay. kind of melts down so when you get the batter all ready, uh -huh. uh, you can, uh, I made a mess here, man, look at that. It's not yeah, good you know what? You, it you, ain't you, cooking unless you're making a yes, mess in the kitchen. That's what I was getting ready to say. So you 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 whisk this up uh, until there's. I mean, it, there can be some lumps in there, but you want to make sure that it's as few as possible. Okay. Uh, now this Danish whisk, I had no idea what this thing was up until I started to watch TikTok mm. during <laughs> during the the pandemic. There's this guy on there. He's. I mean, I call him a kid. Jeremy Sheck. Sheck eats. His brother went to Northwestern. His older brother. He goes to Cornell, but he does uh, cooking segments, and he is a big fan of the Danish whisk. So I said. Why not, Jeremy Shack? I'm gonna go get myself one of those too. Now, uh, this thing is pretty adaptable, and as you notice, there is no sugar, no refined sugar in this. There's just the vanilla, uh, cardamom, and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, you mix this up, you pour it in uh, the pan. After that, you have to be very careful about taking the pan out of the oven once it's preheated mm -hmm. uh, with that melted butter. Mm -hmm. You pour this uh, in the pan, and then you just set it in there. 25 minutes of 425. Do you pour the butter into the to the mix? Or no, you, you put just, the butter in the pan. I put the butter I mean, in the pan. Right, but I mean, once the butter is melted, do you put it in the mix or you just leave no, you it just, in the you pan? Ju you just kind of, here, I'll do, it, I'll do it right now. Andy, our producer, is going to have a little bit of a thing. Why? Because, you know, because he's telling me 30 seconds, so whatever. Okay, well, we got to see how it's done. <laughs> what is he, the boss? I got to see right. how it's done. All right, so we just pour this. Very simple. We take this, just pour it in. Oh, okay. Boom. Oh, all right. It's still lumpy, whatever. Well, still gonna oh. come out all right, right? It'll be, it'll be fine. Okay. Uh, you know, I wanted to be extra fancy. I sent you a picture of it yesterday. Yeah. I made me some cinnamon apples yesterday. Mm, they looked delicious. So you can put this, so you can eat this plain. Uh, you can put some berries on it. You can put it, um, you know, I'm gonna have to move this. Sorry. Okay, we'll start to wrap, Andy. Don't you worry. Okay. Uh, so you can put some berries on it. You uh -huh. can zest some lemon. You can do it very simple with uh, some uh, powdered sugar if you want to. Mm. Uh, you can do uh, some lingonberries. Be a little bit more... Uh, Finnish. I, I think this is Swedish. I don't Swedish, know. Swedish, I don't know. No, all, all of Scandinavia is kind of a... Uh, 
a mess, a mess to me. Um, okay. So anyway, 425 for 25 minutes, it'll puff up, and when you take it out, you let it sit for a couple of minutes, it'll start to sink in and look like this. So it kind of looks like one of those Dutch babies you get Yeah. at the original pancake house. Can you so put syrup on it? You can put syrup on it. Uh, I actually have some of this uh, cherry syrup right here that we got from Mario Ooh. Rizzotti, our good friend. Yeah, Chef Mario he's got Rizzotti. good stuff. So yeah, you can, you can basically, you can eat it plain if you wanted to. Okay. So there you go. Yeah.